What's up, y'all? I'm Reed the Fishmonger, and today we're gonna fillet up a genuine American red snapper. The reason why we call it a genuine American red snapper is because there's multiple different species of red snapper. You've got a South American red snapper, Caribbean red snapper, lots of snapper that have red skin, like vermilion snapper, yellow eye snapper, blackfin snapper, but there is only one genuine American red snapper. Normally when you have red snapper in seafood markets, they're coming out of the Gulf if they're US caught. We've got a short window in the Atlantic, which is where we are at, at Captain Clay and Son Seafood Market, where we can catch these fish right out on our coast. And that's where this beautiful fish was caught. Look at those crystal clear eyes. This fish is hours out of the water. One of our local commercial fishermen, Eric, caught this for us, and we're gonna get it all cut up for you. All right, first we're going to take the scales off on this collar throat area. I call them snapper wings. It's a lot easier to take the scales off the wing while it's a whole fish before you take the fillets off, so that's what we're doing. And we're not taking the scales off the rest of the fish because a lot of our customers at Captain Clay's like grilling their big red snapper fillets on the half shell simply means with the skin and scales on. The reason why you leave the scales on is because the skin will hold in all the moisture of your fish and with the scales left on, the meat will slide off the skin easily. And if the scales are removed, the meat will stick to the skin more. Wow, that is such a beautiful fish. All right, you guys, I am so grateful to hardworking local commercial fishermen for providing us with fish like this. If you eat fish, Thank a local commercial fisherman in your area because, because of hardworking people like them that you get to enjoy fish like this. I don't think most people realize how much work goes into a day on the water. But anyways, let's get this cut up. All right, on our first cut, we're gonna make sure that our knife is sliding underneath these scales, not trying to cut through these scales. If you're going like this, you're cutting through the scales, whereas like this, you can see how it wedges right underneath the scales. That's where you want to be. Then you can see right here, those scales are actually showing you the outline of the meat. So let's get our knife underneath those scales and then follow that outline all the way forward. Then we're going to stick the tip of our knife in and cut out right there. Now we're going to use the tip of our knife, go right at that opening and we're gonna gently slide all the way down. It's one of my favorite cuts and you only get that nice satisfying motion when your knife is almost at 180 degree angle. Your knife is like this, you're gonna be working it, you're not gonna get that nice satisfying long motion. Now we're gonna wedge our knife right on top of the skeleton and pull towards the head. With your knife right on top of the skeleton, you're not pushing down hard, you're just applying enough pressure to make sure your knife doesn't rise and you're not pushing down hard enough to cut through the skeleton. Just gently letting the skeleton guide your knife. Super easy. Now, over towards the center, we're gonna stick the tip of our knife at the base of the ribs, angle it slightly up. There we go. What we just did was separate the connection of pin bones make to the ribs. And on these bigger red snappers, it is harder. And what we just did when we did that was we went to the top of this tall spine. So you got the center spine here, it's tall. So if you don't go to the top of it, you'll lose meat going over. And we wanna make sure that we can get the right angles not to lose any of that delicious snapper meat. So now we wanna get to the top of this rib cage. We wanna get that rib cage exposed. Once that rib cage is exposed, we can rest our knife right on top of those rib bones and slide down. Once you get to the bottom of the ribs, you wanna cut down harder, making sure you don't get any of the ribs on your fillet. All the rib bones are right here and you got all that belly meat on the fillet of your red snapper. It's a thing of beauty. Now red snapper belly is not gonna be like, you know, toro, tuna belly, swordfish belly, those fatty cuts. 
Uh, it's going to be much leaner than that, but it's a thin, light, mild, flaky piece of fish that's absolutely delicious, and you don't want to lose out on it. This membrane is edible, but it's not going to be as pleasant as the meat, so we're just going to gently shave that off. And we got one last swipe right there, and there is your completed, beautiful red snapper filet. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna slide underneath those scales, not try to cut through them. Go at a hard angle, make sure we're tipping the knife all the way behind the head, not losing any of that delicious meat, having it fully separated underneath that throat. Flip her around. We're gonna put the tip of our knife right at that opening we just made and slide on down. Now what we can do is rest our knife right on top of that skeleton and let the skeleton guide our knife. Go to the top of that tall spine, tip of the knife, base of the ribs, separate the connection of pin bones make to those ribs. No matter how much that big red snapper wants to fight back and not let you go over the ribs, we're gonna dip our knife right there. Now on these really tall rib fish, you can come from this side and get the angle you need. Because sometimes coming from here, with your knife going like this, if the belly's pushing in, you're gonna end up losing your belly meat. So whatever works best for you. And look at that. Rib bones are right there on our red snapper, not on our filet. Got the belly meat on the filet. There's still gonna be meat underneath these rib bones but it's not something you're able to get onto the flakes. They're literally underneath that bone. If you can see that bone fully exposed. There, there's no closer we could have gotten to those bones, but we are not losing out on that meat, no sir. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna slide our knife underneath these rib bones. And once we scrape underneath all these rib bones, See how that just fell down? We got this piece of meat that will release and you just pull it right out. It's not a big chunk of meat, but that is a little morsel that is absolutely delicious. Don't want to lose out on it. Slide our knife right underneath each of those rib bones. And there we go. You don't want to pull it out. You want to be more gentle with your meat. I like it rough. You can just use your knife and cut it out. And look at that. That right there is red snapper rib meat. Absolutely delicious stuff. Now if you're hardcore about not wasting any fish at all. I applaud you. I love people like that. You can take a spoon and scrape in between each of these vertebrae and you can get a couple more ounces out of that. We're going to skip that step today. We're going to go straight for these cheeks. Snapper cheeks, really snapper don't have the largest cheeks. Uh, you know, often they're just not worth it. Just put your whole head in a soup or a stock and go from there, but when a red snapper is this big, we can definitely get some nice cheek meat out of it. I'm gonna flip it around so the camera can see. We wanna make a nice long incision all the way across. That does is it releases the cheek and you get a nice peel on it, yeah. Sometimes right there, your cheeks stick that's okay, grab your knife, cut it out, and look at that. Come on guys, you know how many of these cheeks are ending up back in the ocean? People take those fillets off, chuck the rest. This is a delicious morsel, eat your snapper cheeks. All right, we're gonna take it out of the other side. I like using those eyeballs as fish handles. Once you get to that lip, Give it a nice hard flick and that kind of releases the whole thing. Now we can just do a nice long incision and that whole thing will peel right out. Look at that. One step left and that is wing removal. I love snapper wings. 
you guys didn't see the video of me grilling up snapper wings and making them buffalo style, check that out. All right, we're gonna cut this out. Lift up on the face, exposing the gills. There's this membrane right here. We're gonna puncture that membrane, slide underneath the throat. We're gonna puncture that membrane again, slide underneath the throat. Now, this bone right here is resting on top of this bone. They actually move independently because they're not connected. But yeah, it's hard to see on camera, but those two bones move independently. You're about to see where I'm talking, right here. You just slide your knife right underneath, and then they just pull out right like that. On larger fish, sometimes they're easy to just pull. So if it doesn't pull out like that, I've got some kitchen shears hanging out here. And if it doesn't want to pull right out, I just give it a little snip. And this one doesn't want to come out as easily, so we take our scissors. And there we go. Look at the size of those snapper wings. We're going to set this off to the side. That's going to make a great soup, stock, all kinds of stuff, crab traps, so many different applications for fish skeletons. And we're just going to clean this up just a little bit, shave off some of this membrane, Got a little bit of organ meat left on there. And that's looking good. You really don't need any more trimming than that. We're just gonna rinse it off in salt water and ice. If you ever have salt water fish, make sure you don't put fresh water on it. The fish will absorb the fresh water, compromising the quality and texture of the meat. So what we do is we make a salt water and ice bath. It's so salty and cold, that the meat won't absorb any of the water. All right, we're gonna shave off some of this stuff. A little bit of that membrane, blood. Just making it look a little prettier. And there we go, that's, that's good to go. We got some scales that were left right here when I'm cooking my snapper wings. I don't want to get any scales in there, so I'm just gonna cut that out. Look at that. Two snapper wings. After you give that a good rinse, pat it dry. Those are ready for the grill, ready for the air fryer, deep fryer, whatever you got going on. You guys, thank you so much for watching this video, watching us break down a red snapper together. Hope you guys learned something. If there's anything that I didn't touch up on that you want me to touch on, comment below. Let me know what you guys wanna see. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Have a killer day.